Welcome back to Switch Corner, it's volume 7 of our Hidden Gem series. Here we're trying to basically like dive into those games you may have missed, or simply those that maybe you've forgotten. With the countless games we see added on a weekly basis to the console, it's easier to do than you may think. With that though, as always, I'm going to be breaking down 5 games, telling you why I like them and like who out there might enjoy them too. Alongside that then, all the good stuff, you know, the price, the file size and so on. So with that luck, hit subscribe if you love the Switch, as much as we all do here here, join our growing family, and let's get started. So kicking us off today then we've got the Almost Gone. This one it's combining puzzle game elements with a story to, I've got to say, great effect. What I think catches nearly everyone's eye immediately here is the truly unique visual style. Basically, just to give you an example, you'll find yourself within different locations. So let's say the opening house. However, here each room is a diorama that you can freely like rotate or move between. While the visuals have this truly like beautiful look though, I've got to say the story is dark in its tone. You're taking on the role of a young girl that is essentially somewhere between life and death. Your goal, uncover what happened, but then understand also what was happening around you within, you know, your family unit and those like neighbors and stuff. Things like the force, the impact of an alcoholic on a family too. Maybe what your family went through before you as well. It's heavy stuff, but it's handled just nearly perfectly. And those visuals they might start all nice and bright but they slowly move more and more into the surreal so think like a police car in a tree to a location where all the color is removed i'll tell you now the almost gone is a short game but when you combine the stunning writing by an award-winning author a soundtrack that captures just each and every scene perfectly and then the visual style that just slowly like starts clean but gets almost eerie as you progress yeah, sure isn't a bad thing because they've just nailed the pacing gear and by focusing purely on the message, it's just so powerful. Over five chapters, I had a fantastic time. If you don't pick it up now, add it to your wish list because this one comes highly recommended from me. I went in expecting, you know, any other gentle puzzle adventure and left having tackled themes of death, loss, mental health and all other manner of like heavy subjects. It's rare you can say that about a game. All right, so started off heavy, so let's lighten the mood with Taiko no Tatsujin, Drum and Fun. Having played a number of like rhythm games recently, I went back and revisited this. It's easily one of my favorites on the Switch. It is absolutely huge in Japan as games go, but it's relatively new over here. The idea is really simple though, hit the drum in time with the music. Now controls wise, you can use touchscreen, which is really nice, you can use Joy-Cons, which are okay, but then you can also use motion sensors. You're using the Joy-Cons, it isn't awful, but if you're like a perfectionist, you're not going to like it because the odd bug does kind of jump out here and there, keeping you away from like 100% completion. This one though, the ultimate way to play, honestly, it requires your investment. You can import a dedicated drum controller. Not cheap at all, but I'm going to link it below because honestly, if you like what you see, you know, give it a go. Consider flexing that credit card because I've never had a rhythm experience like this one and I wish honestly more games would take advantage of this controller. Tons of content with this game too I gotta say like think 70 plus songs with tracks from the likes of Kirby to Super Mario to Splatoon. There's a party mode for up to four players perhaps the brightest visuals on the console yet and then if you want to spend even more cash there's a ton of DLC too. By far the most expensive game I've ever featured on this list if you go that physical drum route but do know I've been playing it since it released back in 2000 2018 and I still do to this day so I see that as getting my money's worth honestly even if I do still suck at the game. Oh and a quick warning here as well like if you live with others do know using the drum it kind of sounds like there's a construction crew in your house trust me I've been told. All right so now Power Roomy it was actually just announced this is getting a limited physical run thanks to Play Asia, but this is largely overlooked as entries in the eShop go and it deserves a lot more love. Here what we're getting essentially is a vertical scrolling shmup like any what you have here is a game with like incredible difficulty while demanding more of that you know high score chasing vice in your head. What makes Power Roomy so like unique for me though is its production quality of the whole like experience. First the camera it's gonna like twist and turn before dropping you into the gameplay. It gives everything like a very cinematic feel. Then the backgrounds are all rendered in 3D so you get this real nice depth of field showing you how like high you truly are. Finally, the story, not only does it have a story, but it's a decent one too, as you tackle a council that basically rules over this land with an iron fist. Now I will say here though, that story may not be to everyone just because it is using still images and text, but I can't deny these pieces of work like pre-Columbian, 
inspired sci-fi pieces of art are just absolutely incredible to look at. Top all this off then with multiple difficulty modes, 60 frames per second, and honestly for this genre you have a winner here. If you need any more persuading though, expect to find here weapon switching gameplay, so think that of Ikaruga, a metal soundtrack, and then built-in achievements. It's a great game, well worth a look. So our penultimate game of the week then, Black 88. Seems a lot of people love to hunt down and this is basically, you know, take that neon infused world and over the top gore and now throw it all into like a roguelike format. Here's the idea and it's a good one. Climb a procedurally generated tower to reach and kill the insane owner at the top before your heart explodes. Now I didn't say it was serious, but it is a whole lot of fun. For me, it's kind of taking elements of the good Judge Dredd movie, uh, Dredd with Cole Urban, and then throwing in a dash of like Crank with Jason Statham for the insanity portion of the topic. It's not bringing anything like new to the genre honestly and it's very much like a side-scrolling run and gun platformer that's using uh, twin stick controls but it's just the whole packaging I love. This cool cyberpunk like world with this amazing synthwave soundtrack to really you know reinforce its influences. With a decent challenge though this one should keep you entertained for some time. There's also going to be then multiple characters to use, a fast pace to it all, tons of weapons and then of course a decent chunk of replayability because one you'll be dying a lot and starting all over again and then two locations. Layouts they'll slightly change thanks to them being procedurally generated. Check it out if you want something that might kick your ass a little bit. So our final game this week then and I think this one may be a little controversial. Some people loved it, others hated it. I for sure fall into the loved it camp. Rainworld from Adult Swim Games, who I've got to say are putting out some seriously impressive releases on the Switch eShop. Here you're going to be taking on the role of a slug cat though, out in a world that's essentially like at this point post apocalyptic. It's kind of combining 2D adventure platforming with survival gameplay, as you were fade not only a ton of enemies that are an absolute pain in the ass, but rainfall which actually threatens to drown all life. I think what got this one some bad reviews honestly is the fact it's just brutally challenging. But as long as you go in expecting to die a lot, you should enjoy it. I don't think the challenge is unfair personally, I think it's completely like on purpose and that to me is key whether difficulty should impact your opinion of it. If it's intended to kick your ass then honestly, respect for committing to that idea. Here though, explore the world, fight enemies because there's like really not much you can do about them honestly on a combat front and then just try and survive. This isn't the simple move from point A to point B though but understand your path hide and then plan. It's incredible stuff in my opinion, just don't play this one if you get frustrated easily. If you're worried about difficulty too as well, know there is some DLC characters that are now included that can make it a little bit easier or even a little bit harder. And that is it, volume 7 down. Do you own any of these or are any of them catching your eye? As always then, like a shout out to the patrons of the channel who are just going above and beyond to support Switch Corner. It truly is appreciated. So thank you all so much. Then if you are new here, hit subscribe if you love the Switch as much as we all do in this community, join our growing family. I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.